So I'm here at the 2015 New York Comic Con, and I'm speaking with the author of a very unusual self-help book. Good sir, what's your name? Keith R.A. DeCanzado. Very nice to meet you, DeCanzado. Now, can you tell the folks at home what the title of your book is? It's a Star Trek book called The Klingon Art of War. Very interesting. Now, what kind of book is The Klingon Art of War? It's presented as a historical text that was published in the Klingon Empire about a thousand years ago, you know, within the Star Trek universe. And then there's, uh, there's the original text from oh, ancient times, and then there's modern commentary by a 24th century Klingon author who provides more recent historical examples that illustrate the ten precepts that make up the book. Wow, now that sounds, that sounds very interesting. So what made you want to write something like a Klingon self-help book? It was it was a collaborative effort. Um, the book was put together by a packaging company in Seattle called Becker and Meyer, which has the license to do Star Trek, uh, not actual novels, but other like related Star Trek books. They've all they did stuff like um, the Federation: The First 150 Years book, the Star Trek Maps book that Larry, um, I think Larry Nemechek did, um, the uh, autobiography of James T. Kirk that came out recently. That, those were all with uh, Becker and Meyer, and they approached me with the idea of doing the Klingon Art of War. They thought that would be a cool like kind of mash. Of, of a philosophical Klingon text um, in this, along the same lines as Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Um, my book is a little more philosophical than it is tactical. It doesn't have specific guidelines for how to beat people up or anything, um, or how to fight war, but how to... Right. Um, but it's more along the lines of how to live your life by the warrior code that the Klingons live by. So well, That's very interesting. Now, I mean, what made you... I mean, how did you get started writing about Star Trek? Uh, I've been well. I've been a fan of Star Trek uh, since birth, basically. Um, my parents were, watched the show when it originally aired in the late '60s. I watched it in reruns when I was growing up here in New York in the in the '70s when Channel 11 used to show it every night. And um, I was always a fan, and I was I've been a writer pretty much since I was six. Um, I and then in 1994 I started publishing regularly, and then in 1999 I was approached by the editor at Simon and Schuster, who had read my other work and thought gave me the opportunity to pitch and it just steamrolled from there. I've been I've been writing Star Trek fiction in some form or other since 2000. So, wow, that's quite a while. So, what are some of your other works? Uh, the other Star Trek books I've done, I did a book called Articles of the Federation, which was kind of a Star Trek version of the West Wing. It follows the a year in the life of the Federation president. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of books uh, featuring the Klingons, which is why I got approached to do the Klingon Art of War in the first place. Uh, I've written a bunch of books that take place within the Klingon Empire, uh, a series that took place on a Klingon ship. Uh, I did a book called The Art of the Impossible, which was uh, about a historical Cold War between the Klingons and the Cardassians. Uh, I've done a couple of Next Generation books, one called A Time for War, A Time for Peace, uh, one called Q&A, which was sort of the ultimate Q story. Um, I did a whole bunch of books for the Starfleet Corps of Engineers series. Um, I've done some short stories, I've edited some anthologies, and, and a whole bunch of other things. Wow, that sounds really very. That's quite a body of work. Um, that's just the Star Trek stuff. I've done. I've done a lot of other uh, licensed fiction along those lines. I've written in about twenty-five different media universes. Most recently, I did a Sleepy Hollow novel based on the Fox TV show. Uh, I've done a novella for uh, the Heroes Reborn, the new NBC series, which will be out in November. Uh, one of six novellas that they're doing that tie into the the, the miniseries. And I've written a Stargate SG One novel. Um, I've done three Supernatural novels based on the TV show. I did a Farscape comic book a few years back. Um, I've done I've done a lot of, of media fiction. So very nice. Now, do you have any advice for somebody who might want to get started writing this sort of stuff? Uh, the best advice I can give is to work on your own stuff first. Establish yourself, get yourself published, writing your own original fiction, and that because these things don't start with the writer; they start with the publisher. A publisher buys the rights to do books based on heroes, or based on Star Trek, or based on Supernatural, Sleepy Hollow, whatever. Once the publisher gets those rights, then they turn around and hire writers. They're more likely to go for an established professional writer. Um, so that's your best bet: is to get your own work published, establish yourself as a professional writer first, and then it'll be much easier. You'll, you'll develop the contacts and you'll develop, you know, meeting other writers, meeting editors, talking to editors, and, and giving yourself a resume that will impress editors, uh, at which point then you're more likely to be approached for something like that. Very cool. Now I have to ask, what is your all-time favorite Star Trek story? Oh, jeez. Um, probably... Uh, my Klingon bias is going to be showing here. I, what I liked in particular was across Star Trek Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, there were a series of Klingon political stories that started in 1990 with Sins of the Father on Next Gen, went all the way through to a Deep Space Nine episode in 1999 called Tacking into the Wind. 
And I, tacking to the wind in particular, I love because it tied together so many previous Klingon stories and and brought it to a wonderful climax. Um, and so that that probably would be it. I also have a great fondness for. Um, uh, one particular story, a Deep Space Nine story that was called Far Beyond the Stars, in which we saw the actors playing the roles of science fiction writers in, 19, in the 1950s. Yeah. So, that was a really cool one, too. It had a, real, it had a lot to say about um, race relations and, and gender roles and uh, you know, how, how far humanity still has to come and has to go, which is what Star Trek has always been best at anyway. Um, and it was just a wonderful story. So. Well, I'm going to have to keep an eye. I'm going to have to look out for Far Beyond the Stars on Netflix, Ben. Definitely. Yes, and now also there was one more thing that I had to ask you. Do you think that the time is now for a new Star Trek television show? I think so. I've always, uh, with with all due respect to to Harv Bennett and to uh, Nicholas Meyer and to J.J. Abrams and all the other people who've done Star Trek movies, Star Trek is better suited to television. It always has been. I've 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 always felt that. It's better suited to the smaller, character-driven, humanistic stories that television is more suited to than the summer blockbuster action film that, that the movies almost have to be right now. Um, so I, I really I would love there to be another series. I mean, it's obviously not up to me, but <laughs> um, but I think I think it would really now that. The the J.J. Abrams movies have at least done the job of getting the general public interested in Star Trek again. Um, Star Trek merchandise has been on the rise since 2009 when that movie came out, and the general just in general, there's been more interest in Star Trek again. You're seeing a lot more, like even here, you're seeing more Star Trek costumes the last six years than you did in the you know six years before that. So the interest is there, and I think I think it would be great. Uh, well, sir, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. So, the Klingon Art of War, so where can folks pick this up? Uh, you can find it in bookstores, uh, Bar you know, Barnes and & Noble and, and all other independent bookstores. Here's the cover. Lovely cover. And um, you can get it online also from like Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all the usual online book dealers. Uh, it's available both in print as, and as an ebook. So Excellent. And where can folks find more of your work? Uh, if you go to decandido.net, that's D-E-C-A-N-D-I-D-O.net, uh, that's it's under, uh, I'm in the process of revamping the website, so right now it's a little kind of chintzy looking. Um, but uh, as, as, as a web designer, I make a great writer. And, uh, but someone's uh, redesigning it for me. But it's still it's a link to my online presence. You can get to my Facebook page, my Twitter feed, my blog. And there are ordering links for my most recent books there as well. So, Fantastic. Well, it has been a pleasure speaking with you, sir. I hope you enjoy your Comic-Con. I'm having a great time. Thank you. <laughs>